A bombshell in Georgia's Senate race. Republican candidate Herschel Walker, who supports a ban on abortions, is denying a Daily Beast report that he paid for a girlfriend to have an abortion more than a decade ago. ABC News has not been able to confirm the Daily Beast's reporting, but Walker's son thinks the reports are true. And here's just some of what he said on Twitter in response. I stayed silent as the atrocities committed against my mom were downplayed. I stayed silent when it came out that my father, Herschel Walker, had all these random kids across the country, none of whom he raised. And you know my favorite issue to talk about is father absence. Surprise, because it affected me. The abortion card drops yesterday. It's literally his handwriting in the car. They say they have receipts, whatever. He gets on Twitter. He lies about it. Okay, I'm done. Done. Everything has been a lie. For more on this, let's bring in ABC News political director Rick Klein and also Sirius XM host and ABC News contributor Mike Muse. Rick, let's go ahead and start with you. We knew Walker had a checkered past, okay? And right now he's neck and neck with Democrat Raphael Warnock, according to the latest average from 538. So what do you think is going on here, and is this enough to sink him? Well, it's going to test the proposition that we saw so many times with former President Donald Trump, where it looked like a revelation that no one could recover from. Partisanship remains a big poll. We have seen the polls tighten. People vote on a lot of things. I think there are two main issues that the Walker campaign has to deal with now. One is that you now have his son, who is a prominent conservative influencer, uh, out there now publicly saying that he believes the allegations and he believes that his father uh, acted inappropriately over a number of years and resurfaces those allegations five weeks out. The other problem is going to be a lot of voters who might leave this race blank, uh, that they may not like either Senate candidate. Right now, Governor Brian Kemp in a pretty strong position at the top of the ticket, but the Senate race will be a lot closer. It's almost assured that Herschel Walker will underperform other Republicans on the ticket, uh, and you're up against uh, a Senator and Raphael Warnock, who has begun to, to build a record and is popular in his own right. So, Mike, what do you make of this story and the way Herschel Walker and his son Christian are both responding? And just as Rick mentioned, the key for me, I lean, look to as a son, uh, as being a really big conservative influencer who is not moderate or Democrat by any way, coming out against his father and saying that, you know, they tried to warn his father uh, what was to come if he decided to run for public office, uh, that what would come out, his dirty laundry would air, and it could be a challenge for him going forward. Uh, the, my big takeaway from this is that uh, a pattern of just untruth from Herschel Walker. And so the Georgia voters have to be very mindful going forward when they enter the ballot box to figure out uh, his inconsistency with the stories uh, that just keep coming up as untrue. Uh, and there are a lot of receipts and evidence to support uh, these claims. So it goes to his character and how he would handle himself in the Senate if he was to represent Georgia. So how are other Republicans responding now, Rick? Well, most, including former President Trump, are standing behind him, uh, saying that they believe Herschel Walker. We should note that he uh, promised that he would file a lawsuit this morning against the Daily Beast that has not materialized. Uh, his co campaign came out and continued to say uh, that these are all lies. Uh, but again, the Christian Walker part of this makes it more complicated. Uh, a lot of Republicans that I've been talking to uh, who were concerned about his candidacy from the, from the start, uh, maybe quietly saying, told you so. Uh, they had worries that Trump's hand-selected pick, this is someone who's traded on their friendship with Donald Trump, if not for Trump, Herschel Walker would not have been a candidate for Senate, almost certainly. A lot of Republicans in Georgia thought this was a mistake to go with someone who had admitted to, to, to domestic violence allegations, for instance, in the past, and had a checkered mental health history, if nothing else. All of these things that have come out have not surprised or shocked a lot of people in Georgia, including some Republicans. But they are stuck with him now, like him or not, and we are seeing, at least on the official side, people standing behind them and blaming this on Democrats trying to smear him, notwithstanding, again, uh, the fact that his son, a uh, conservative influencer is out there saying he, he believes the allegations. So, Mike, while Warnock is ahead in the polls, Stacey Abrams appears to be trailing uh, current Republican Governor Brian Kemp. Why do you think she's not doing better? And could this end up helping her as well? I think it could. Uh, Herschel Walker right now is getting so much of the headlines. And so because Herschel Walker is getting so much of the headlines in the state of Georgia, uh, Raphael Warnock is part of that headline grabbing narrative conversation. Uh, and so as people begin to really focus on the Senate race, uh, I think as a result, we're, got, we're going to see a focus 
on the governor's race. And I think that as a Democratic base goes out and supports uh, Senator Warnock, I think we will see a slight edge uh, in support uh, for Stacey Abrams as she runs. Uh, the challenge is, is the way that the previous uh, governor's race was handled. A lot of Georgians feel uh, not enthusiastic and, and really a sense of frustration in how it was handled. And it's hard to get them to come back twice again to the polls uh, to vote for their candidate uh, who came up short, uh, some would say not to her own doing. Uh, but I do believe because there's been so much national focus on the Senate race, I think it will compel them uh, to become uh, interested in the governor's race again. And I think we'll start to see an uptick in Stacey Abrams polls numbers. Interesting. Rick, big picture. You know, we're just weeks away from the midterms now. How do you think things stand at this moment? Yeah, Akira, the, the, the math is as stark as ever for Democrats in the House. Only five seats need to get flipped by Republicans for the Republicans to take over the majority. They are still heavy favorites, I would say, uh, in today's betting markets to, to take that over. The Senate's another story, and it's races like this that are going to determine it. Uh, even if you were to shrink the battlefield to a handful of three, four states, uh, Georgia is high on that list. If the Democrats are able to hold that, it goes a long way toward uh, their, their hopes of maintaining the Senate, and they are still part of that conversation five weeks out. That itself is surprising uh, because a lot of people came into the year thinking this is going to be a huge Republican wave year. Tell you what, it's going to get busy for all of us. Mike Muse, Rick Klein, thanks guys so much. Thanks, Kira. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.